Welcome to worship here with us at Webster Gardens. I'm Joel Christensen, one of your pastors here at Webster Gardens. We recognize during this coronavirus crisis that there's a lot of uncertainty in our lives. And yet we believe that God is faithful, God loves us, God will meet our needs, God will provide for us, and He will also use us to care for other people. That's true not just because we think so, but that's God's promise to us. As we worship together, I encourage you to actively participate, open your Bibles, read the scripture, take notes, join in the songs and the hymns. Would you please do us a favor and complete the communication card. Just click on the button that's below this and you'll be able to share with us that you joined us in worship. You can also share with us any comments that you have. Secondly, as God leads you, we encourage you to bring your offering to the Lord. And so if you want to do that, there's also a link that you can also click to join in giving an offering to the Lord. If you have a special need, we want to be able to help you. So don't hesitate to contact us. You can call us at our church office, 314-961-5275, or email us at info at WebsterGardens.org. And now we come together. Let's worship the Lord. On that first Easter, Jesus rose from the dead and he showed that he had power even over death. Then Paul would relate that power to us when he wrote, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give new life to your mortal bodies through his spirit that lives in you. In other words, that same power that raised Jesus to life is that same power that God uses to bring us new life. Today, we're going to look at how to be strong in that mighty power of God. So welcome to worship. This is worship. I hope that you participate. I hope that you do more than watch. I hope you sing along. Our opening hymn is going to be from Easter 2018 here in Webster Gardens. And then with God's people around the world as we join together, we can also shout together that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.
are really strong, like so strong that you can open a pickle jar by yourself. I'm gonna give it a try. I can't quite do it. Um, I have a knife. How many of you seen that work? I think you're just supposed to like tap it a little bit and then you should be able to open it. I can't open it by myself. Looks like I'm gonna need some help. Well, um, I'm guessing that I loosened it a little bit for him, don't you think? Or maybe you like to use your strength to do projects at home. I'm gonna give it a shot today. What I'm gonna try and do is drive this screw into this board using my bare hands. You think I can do it? Let's give it a shot. Ugh, I don't think I'm strong enough. Even with these gloves, this screw is not moving at all. I'm gonna need some help. I think I'm gonna need some tools. How about I use this screwdriver. I'm sure many of you have used a screwdriver before. And I think, I think it's working. I think it's helping me to have the strength to drive this into the board, but not quite all the way. I'm not strong enough. I think I need to use a power tool. This should get the job done. Yes, I got it. This made me strong enough. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I screwed the board to the table. Maybe you're a really strong kid and you can handle a lot of challenges like opening this pickle jar by yourself or driving a screw into this board with your bare hands or at least with a power tool. But the truth is, we face a lot of different challenges in our life. Ones that require real strength, like when you're sad or lonely, sick or afraid, maybe you're even tempted to sin. These are big challenges and they require a lot of strength more strength than you can get from your muscles or even a power tool. So my question is, where do we get our strength? God's word tells us, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Did you catch that? It says our strength comes from God. Then it goes on to say, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. So not only do we find our strength from God, but God gives us armor to fight the battle. A reading from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 24. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Tychicus, the dear brother and faithful servant in the Lord, will tell you everything so that you also may know how I am and what I am doing. I am sending him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage you. Peace to the brothers and sisters, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. Standing firm in the armor with which our God clothes us, we are then bold to proclaim our Christian faith as we do so with the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you joined us last week for Easter, you know that we called it like it is. That first Easter was weird. It was strange. There's no getting around it. See, Jesus had been killed by Roman crucifixion. He had been placed in a tomb. That tomb had been sealed up. And then three days later, he's appearing to people. Not a vision, not as a ghost, not in the sense of, oh, Jesus, his memory is alive among the people who love him. No, he was physically walking around, having power over death. The resurrection of Jesus was weird. It was weird to his followers. You know, their reaction was the same 2,000 years ago as ours would be today. They weren't yahoos. They knew people didn't just rise from the dead. And they were afraid, and they were joyful, and they were excited, and they were doubtful. But they couldn't deny what had happened. The resurrection of Jesus changed their lives. They couldn't be the same after that. You know, last week on Easter, Pastor Christensen talked about these words that the Apostle Paul wrote to the believers in Corinth. You probably remember the words. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Now, Paul was an interesting guy to be the one to deliver that message. Maybe the best way to picture the first part of Paul's life is to imagine somebody trying to stomp out a fire on some dry grass. Maybe you picture yourself, yourself quarantining in your backyard and your fire pit's going and an ember pops out and it lands on some leaves or on some dry grass and you're trying to stomp that out. But Meanwhile, another ember comes by somewhere else and you have to go and try to put that one out. That's a picture of what Paul was like. Except Paul was trying to stomp out all the places where these believers were spreading this news about Jesus' resurrection. This was the first months after it happened. You see, this was new. And it was weird. And Paul didn't like it. He was having people arrested. Paul was overseeing executions. And yet, people were still worshiping Jesus. People were still being baptized. They were boldly dedicating their lives to following him. See, that's how powerful the resurrection of Jesus was. It changed people's lives. It changed Paul's life. This was one of the greatest turnarounds in world history. This would be even bigger than Bernie Sanders announcing tomorrow that he was re-entering the race as a Republican. This was bigger than President Trump quitting Twitter. Jesus had turned Paul into a dedicated and confident follower of Jesus. This was huge. Paul spent the rest of his life serving and leading the same people who he was originally trying to have imprisoned and killed. What God wants is that the power of Jesus' resurrection would change your life that drastically too. See, Paul said that to the Corinthians that we can be strong because Jesus is alive. Then Paul also wrote another letter. This was a letter to the Ephesian believers. And Ephesus, the city of Ephesus, is what's in uh, now modern-day Turkey. And speaking of the Ephesians, actually, I want to take a little time out to share a resource with you. One of our members, Jason Brogy, he's a pastor, he's a director at Lutheran Hour Ministries. He's been walking through the New Testament letter to the Ephesians in a series. It's going through this whole letter. Uh, it's on our church website, and the study is called To the Saints. And I really recommend that you check it out. We're going to link it in the description for a thorough study of this book of the New Testament. But throughout this letter, Paul lays out Jesus' identity. 
who he is. He's the eternal son of God. And then that Jesus uses his power to bring you to God. And then your life is now part of God's kingdom. And then living in that kingdom changes your life and makes it weird. Good, but weird. He changes your life between you and your kids, between you and your boss, between you and your spouse, between you and your neighbor. And Paul lays out all these different relationships. And so he lays all of this out. And then, in the last chunk of the letter that you heard from our Bible reading, Paul says, finally. Finally. And he's referring back to everything that he had built up about Jesus and about you and about living in his kingdom. And he says, Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Be strong. Wouldn't you want that? Who wouldn't want that? Strong to face the challenges life throws at you. Strong to handle all of life's uncertainties. That's great to be able to say. But there are realities too. Your pay got cut. You got furloughed. You feel isolated right now. You're cut off from seeing many of your loved ones, from your support system. And those realities can just seem crushing. So be strong. Really, Paul? Really, God? That's what I'm supposed to do? Let's look at that word. Because in fact, be strong, it's not a command. It's not a finger wagging from Paul saying, you know what, hey, you need to do better at handling these tough times. That's not what it is at all. In fact, most English translations could use a tweak in that language, including this one that we read from. Because the term be strong is actually be strengthened. Be strengthened in the Lord. Do you catch that difference? See, true strength isn't from me. It comes from God who provides everything that we need. So, what is it that Paul says that God gives you? Well, Paul wants to illustrate this in a memorable way. So he pulls out this picture that every Ephesian would recognize of someone being well-equipped. And that's the Roman soldier. See, every Ephesian could picture an armed soldier from the Roman Empire. They were everywhere, keeping order with their helmet and their shield and their breastplate and their sword. And that picture is so iconic that 2,000 years later, halfway around the world, you know what a Roman soldier looks like. You can picture that in your head. And so Paul says, put on the whole armor of God so that you can stand firm. You wondering if you can be strong? Paul says, come on. Let's go in the armory. Let's get you outfitted. And then he starts pulling equipment out and handing it to you. He's handing out stuff and he names each piece of armor for something that God provides through the reality of the resurrection of Jesus. It's like, here's here's truth, the truth of God's love for you. Here's the breastplate of righteousness, that right standing with God. This is yours. He says, put it on. Here's peace. You know, people try to wrangle peace in so many different ways these days. I just need a few minutes alone for some peace. I just need to binge a little Netflix, a little quibby. We'll see how quickly that dates this video. But real peace comes from the good news of Jesus. Paul even says it. The peace that comes from the gospel. It can't be shaken by our schedules being disrupted. It can't be shaken by tragedy. It's more than coping with life. It's confidence for life. And Paul keeps going. Here's faith, reliance on God. Salvation. The forgiveness of sins. It's a helmet. He says, put it on. Get it in your head. He pulls out a sword. He says, this is God's spirit working through his word. And because Jesus is alive, you are equipped. So what does God's armor do then once you put it on? God makes you strong against evil. Makes you strong against what Paul calls the spiritual darkness of this world. You see, Paul's not joking around. This is different from how we often think about spirituality. Notice that Paul does not say That your life with Jesus is like, you know, sitting in front of a warm, cozy fireplace and you got a cup of hazelnut coffee and you got your cozy sweater. That's not his picture. Also notice that Paul doesn't compare your spiritual life 
to a journey. Oh, holding hands with Jesus, swinging arm in arm. He's taking you to these scenic outlooks and these majestic vistas where tourists pause and reflect and get inspired. No, Paul's like, here's your armor. Put this on. It's going to get gritty. So you don't need strength to escape from real life. You need strength for real life. And Jesus strengthens you in the face of hardship, whether that's unemployment or illness, even persecution, even death. While the forces of spiritual darkness, they want you to despair, to despair when you come up against any of those, to give up or even to try to fix it all yourself, anything besides finding your confidence in God. But God prepares you. He says, be strengthened, be strong. So God makes you strong against evil, and then God makes you strong to strengthen others. You know, we're often content to look at God's strength like it's for me. It's for my own good vibes. It's for my own mental well-being. It's for my own low blood pressure, however I look at it. That's not how Jesus rolls. You see, Roman soldiers were not solo operators, and neither are you. God's strength is from him, and it's to you, and it's for others. Look in verse 19. Paul says, now pray for me. You're armed up, you're equipped, now I need you. Pray for me so I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. If you're a parent, arm up and then put that armor on your kids. You probably get your kids dressed or what you did when they were little, pulling on those pants, pulling that shirt on over their head. Help them get into that armor of God's peace. Help them put on God's truth for their lives. If you're an adult, do that for your aging parent. Remind them about God's promises. If you're a neighbor, help the people around you have that same peace. If you're a Webster Gardens member, check in with your care communities, those people who are living around you. Ask how you can pray for them. I see great examples of this. I see our youth leaders and even some of our Kingdom Quest leaders having Zoom meetings with their students. People making videos for their students, sending them emails, sending them texts, uh, sending, them, sending them cards in the mail. It's a great way that people are connecting. They're being strong for others. So be strong. Not so that you can feel good, but because your neighbor needs it and the world needs it and because Jesus' resurrection requires it. So Paul, he wraps up and he looks at verse 21 and gives an example. He says, I'm sending Tychicus to you for this very purpose, that he may encourage you. See, this guy Tychicus, we don't know a ton about him, but he gets mentioned a lot. Several times in Paul's letters, Paul is sending Tychicus all over the place. He goes to Crete, he goes to Colossae, he goes to Ephesus, and he goes to bring encouragement to the people. God sends us out to each other. Even while we're spatial distancing, isolation is not an option. In fact, why don't you do this? Why don't you grab a scrap of paper or your coloring page, write down three people that you're going to ask how you can pray for them this week and if they need anything from you. I want to close giving just one example about how we use our armor in the King family. So my daughter and I are going through the New Testament book of 1 Peter at bedtime. We're taking it slow. We go through a few verses per night. And so what we do is earlier in the day, she reads those verses, and then she writes down any words that she doesn't know, and then she writes down a main point something that stands out to her from the, uh, the passage that we read. And then at night, at bedtime, then we go through it together and I'll share some things that I see from it and she'll share the things that she sees from it and we'll talk about those words that she doesn't know the definitions of. And so a couple things. First, who's writing what we're reading? Peter. Peter the fisherman. Peter the disciple and friend of Jesus. Peter, who hustled to the tomb and he saw that it was empty. Peter, who talked with the resurrected Jesus. Peter, who knew Paul and he referred to Paul in his own letters. And the second thing is, we just read this a couple of nights ago, 
that Peter ends his letter this way. You're going to notice a theme. It says, And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. Those are Peter's words. Those are Paul's words. Those are God's words to us. Do not let the weirdness of Easter fade off like something in the past. The power of Jesus' resurrection is the power that allows you to be strong today. God strengthens you. On our own, we try to cope and manage, and as a result, we often end up in frustration and despair. But God is a better way, and God will accomplish his purpose in us, and God will also accomplish his purpose to share the message of Jesus with the world through us. So right now, we bring our offerings to the Lord. If you do not call Webster Gardens your church home, please don't feel obligated to bring an offering. But this is what our people do as a way of demonstrating our trust and bringing God our worship. There are a variety of different ways that we bring our offerings to the Lord. You can just grab your phone right now and text the message LCWG to the number 77977. You can also mail in your offering to our address 8749 Watson Road. Or if you want to, just stay online and bring your offering that way. God is using us to accomplish his purpose. Be strengthened. Good morning, Webster Gardens. By now, you have all probably heard about care communities. In fact, those of you who are in care communities have probably already gotten a message from your care community leader. If you have any questions about that, please contact me and just let me know. You also are already starting to talk about how you want to use these $500 grants that you have access to. I just want to share with you some ideas of what small groups are already doing. We have one small group who went out to Target and got five uh, $100 gift certificates and they shared those gift certificates with family members who they knew of who had a job change because of this coronavirus. Some small groups are going out and they're grabbing materials for masks so that they can make masks or, or donate that material to other people to make masks for people who are in need. One group is talking about going out and getting plants and flowers and cards and giving them to neighbors who they know of who might need a little bit of encouragement. And some of your groups are just helping people individually as they know of those needs. It's a phenomenal church. Now remember, in order to use this money, you're going to spend your own money, then you're going to go to WebsterGardens.org, you're going to click on that COVID-19 tab, and you're going to fill out a short form where you're going to share with us your receipts and a short video explaining to us how you use this money. Church, there are so many wonderful ways to use this money, and we just look forward to seeing how God leads you to bless the people around you using this blessing. You, you all are not only generous with your time and your money, but you all are generous with your hearts. Thank you, church. Thank you for being a blessing to the communities that you're in and to this church community. Let's come together and be honest before God and pray. Lord, you are the one who is strong and you are the one who makes us strong. We need your strength to face uncertainties, challenges, disappointment, and grief. Lord, forgive us for our trusting in ourselves. Forgive us for our giving up or just enduring. Forgive us for trying to be our own God and living in our own strength. Lord, forgive us. Restore us for Jesus' sake. He stood firm. He overcame sin and he overcame death for us. We need you, Lord. Lord, we also commend before you those that we know who are in need. We place before you the ill, those who are struggling emotionally and physically. And we name them in our hearts before you right now. Lord, please bring your help, bring your healing. Encourage and strengthen those who are on the front lines. Give wisdom to researchers. Give courage to all of us that we stand firm and that we are strengthened. You know our needs. 
and you'll meet them completely through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So when we are honest about our sin and our failures, God comes to us, and he accepts us right where we are, but he accepts us because of what his Son, Jesus Christ, did. And that Jesus took our sin, he took our failures, and he died for us. As we talked about last week, St. Paul said, because Christ has been raised, your sin is gone. You are completely forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you join me now as we pray together our Lord's Prayer? Pray out loud with us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to come and be strengthened by the real presence of Jesus in Holy Communion. We will be serving communion here from 9 to 10.30 a.m. this morning. Please look at the email that we sent earlier this week that you can look at the guidelines because we want to continue to keep uh, safe measures as we receive Holy Communion. Also, I encourage you to stay to the very end of this video because there are some conversation starters for you. Talk with each other about this message that God gives us about being strengthened and standing firm. And if you're by yourself, give somebody a phone call and talk about these conversation starters. So now hear these words from Peter. Peter is one of Jesus' friends. Jesus strengthened him to live a bold, courageous life. So now... Grace and peace be yours in abundance. So now in your hearts, set apart Jesus as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer for the hope that you have. Jesus is our firm foundation. Stand firm. Put on the full armor of God so you can stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Finally, stand firm. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Stand firm. Be on the alert. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Therefore, my beloved brethren, whom I long to see, my joy and crown, in this way, stand firm in the Lord. Stand firm! How firm a foundation you saints of the Lord is laid for your faith in His excellent word. What more can He say than to you he has said, to you who for refuge to Jesus have fled. Fear not, he is with us, so be not dismayed, for he is our God, our sustainer and strength. He'll be our defender and cause us to stand upheld by his merciful almighty hand Lord will press on and do.